Truth be told, I was not completely sold on the X670 Hours Master subject of my last review. I found it to be a very expensive gamer, lacking all the productive centric features that its competition uh, includes in their uh, models. And, and naturally, I was very curious to see what the B650E variant of that motherboard would bring to us. So today, we are reviewing the heavy B650E Aros Master from Gigabyte, a compact plate of tech hors d'oeuvre served with a concentrate of power and steel. As usual, Aros is Gigabyte's more premium, good looking, better featured family of product and the Master, one of its more expensive and higher tier model. And this year's Master um, has more significance than previous years since it absorbs the Pro Series which used to bridge the cheaper Elite model to the more expensive Master one. The most important here is that uh, compared to its predecessor, the B650E chipset brings in a massive PCIe 5.0 upgrade which will remain the focus of our review. Now, starting with the obvious. Well, it starts pretty well. The B650E Master retains the very robust 8 PCB layer ATX motherboard, which is a first coming from an Aros B powered motherboard, and that obviously has heavy consequences on about everything around it. It means a better VRM heat dissipation, a better PCIe signal isolation, and an overall longer lifespan. A fundamental upgrades, which does sit this board on a robust premium uh, seating, footing, legging. Design-wise, this board imposes. It looks sturdy, metallic, and most importantly, it looks good. The overall theme stays within a very dreamy space gray, which I very much like, showing off some nice intricate laser-drawn shapes cutting across our board componentry. RGB-wise, we do have a rather bright backlitted Aros logo, but for the rest, the master stays sober and does propose instead five Fusion compliant RGB connectors, two of which are addressable. CPU socket wise. The board is working AMD first LGA CPU socket, featuring no less than 1718 low pressure pins, drastically increasing new generation AMD processors bandwidth and allowing both the introduction of the PCIe 5.0 bandwidth standards and the DDR5 RAM support. And uh, as I usually say for the CPU socket, looking at uh, uh, AMD track record, which has a longer CPU socket support lifespan, we should be able to use this kind of motherboard or this motherboard in particular for at least two or three generation of AMD processors. So always a good point there. Now, VRM wise, well here, Gigabyte decided to keep the monstrous VRM that equipped its more expensive X670E variant, making this B650E the most powerful CPU centric motherboard on the market today. We have no less than 2000 amps VRM configured in an eight CPU centric twin faces plus two plus two. That's almost 1700 ridiculous amps to power the most demanding, the, the, the most juice hungry Ryzen CPU AMD can throw at you. And th that might have sounded ridiculously grotesquely overkill just a, a short few months ago, but it is also one of the very few motherboard I've tested, um, which were able to push an OC, a Ryzen 9, uh, to 5.6 gigahertz on the entirety of its cores. And to keep all that heat at bay, Aros decided to provide this massively imposing premium two-stage VRM block linked by a white copper pipe to ensure an equal heat spread among them too. The main block imposes with thick supporting walls and multiple radiating layers, allowing a large heating storage capacity if necessary. And radiating wise, we also have this rather large roof area. The side block is no less well equipped, being massive and showing off several thick radiating fins protruding on each of its sides. Now, worth noting, both of our blocks also feature a double contact design, providing a direct thermal padded contact to both 
chokes and power stages for a faster heat diffusion. Not result wise, with a severely overclocked R9 7900X processor, our blocks never went beyond 40 degrees Celsius, which promises a minimal heat strain on our circuit, hence a reliable, stable and a prolonged motherboard lifespan. But most surprisingly, it is even cooler than the results we've seen on its more expensive X670E variant, which does have an identical VRM configuration, no small feat, and obviously I would not be pairing this motherboard with anything else than an R9 processor, uh, not to waste any kind of processing potential. Overall, the B650 Master uh, not only has a very same crazy uh, VRM we've seen on its uh, more expensive X670E variant, but it does a better job at keeping it uh, cooler longer. And which is definitely surprising coming from a board, which is almost 100 bucks cheaper. So yeah, big, big kudos to Arus for this. Memory wise, our B650E Arus Master supports 128 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM, overclockable up to a devilish 6.66 gigahertz. Again, identical specs than seen on its more expensive X670E variant. Now gaming wise, you will definitely feel a difference when compared to DDR4 RAM, but it is in memory intensive tasks such as content creation that you will benefit the most of the higher clock and increased bandwidth that the DDR5 our five standard brings on the table. Staying in the memory, we do have four M.2 solid state drives, all of which are PCI 5.0 enabled, meaning data swaps going up to 128 gigabit per second individually, two more PCI 5.0 enabled sticks than seen on its more expensive X670E variant. And that makes absolutely no sense. How can a B series be better equipped than an X670E variant? The only caveat here is that when either or both of the middle M.2 SSDs are used, your GPU slot bandwidth goes from 16 PCI lanes to only eight, which is not the most catastrophic thing in the world since it runs at a very fast PCIe 5.0 standard. All that bandwidth does translate in a lot of heat and ours has decided to reproduce exactly what we have seen on its more expensive X670E variant, first featuring a dual side thermal padded contact for a more intimate heat relief, as well as this monstrously tall thermal padded heat block, which is surely more show than useful, but does add to that cool factor you are paying extra money for. Our three other sticks get a much more classic monoplate, which thanks to its thickness does also a great job at keeping our M.2 solid state drive sticks far from the thermal throttling spaghetti monster. Last but not least, all of our M.2 solid state drives are equipped with their own screwless locking mechanism, which is quite different from its competition, but seems to be both more robust and simpler to use. And talking about storage, I do need to mention our usual four SATA 3 plugs here to service our aging legacy drives. Expansion wise, we have three 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the CPU linked one gets a full 16 PCIe lane treatment. Therefore, this is where you want to place your GPU for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcements. It is also the only one running at the PCIe 5.0 standard, allowing it to reach up to a glorious 64 gigabyte per second worth of bandwidth. Our second 16 slot has nothing to be ashamed about as it shows four lanes at PCIe 4 standard for eight gigabyte per second of total bandwidth, great for PCIe based storage. And as for our last naked 16 slot, it runs at a more modest two PCIe three lanes for a total of two gigabyte per second, which would be great for a capture card. Again, the exact same configuration we've seen on its more expensive X670E variant, save uh, the, the PCIe unlocking mechanism. Uh, instead here, we do have an enlarged locking tab for a more comfortable GPU removal experience, but that, that's it. Back IO wise. First, let me note the presence of an integrated back IO, which is always reassuring, but pretty much standard. And starting from the left, we have our Q flash button for a CPU-less BIOS upgrade and a clear CMOS button, both of which are nicely backlighted. Next, we have an HDMI output for our integrated graphics, which might seem like a very small thing, but is a big deal for AMD since uh, this generation of, of processors, the 7000 series, is the very first AMD uh, processors, family of processors to feature standard uh, uh, 
integrated graphics support. Next, we have four USB second generation plugs, four USB 3.1 5 gigabit plugs, five USB 3.2 generation, all able to transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second, including a Type-C. Now, let's note the absence of a dual channel 20 gigabit plug, which I find regrettable. Next, we have a 2.5 gigabit surge protected LAN, our dual band Y56E, able to transmit in the much cleaner and faster 6 gigahertz radio spectrum. And finally, our premium 7.1 channel Realtek ALC1220 VB codec, serviced by a modest 300 microfarads worth of capacitors. But most importantly, we do have our WIMA capacitors, which do save the day and bring this aging codec from good to fantastic. Recording or playback, you are set. Overall, I do find the back IO uh, adequate, which good, uh, well, good connectivity, great troubleshooting feature, but sadly, bandwidth wise, way below the competition. And again, that will hurt the attractivity of the B650 Master. Sadly. Now, chipset wise, our Aorus Master is powered by AMD's brand new B650E chipset, which comes in a more classic single 7 watt chip configuration and has the benefit of needing nothing more than a low profile heat shield to stay cool at all time, which is always a good point. On the inside, we have a bunch of PCIe lanes going in a few different PCIe standard directions, but what really set apart the B650E is that it can utilize the same amount of PCIe 5.0 lanes from the CPU, then seen on its more expensive X670 variant, and allowing a very similar PCIe 5.0 wider support as seen on this board. Now, front panel connector-wise, apart from our usual two second generation USB connector, uh, a 5 gigabit front panel connector, and a Type-C able to transfer up to 10 gigabit per second, we have a Thunderbolt 4 card connector allowing up to a 40 gigabit worth of bandwidth in upgrade. Now, cooling wise, and as in many, many hours motherboards, we have an over the top 10 hybrid fan connectors, which will all support individually either a PWM fan, a water pump, or even a flow sensor, which is obviously a gigabyte specific feature and which I find brings so much more enthusiastic uh, to, to this motherboard than anything available on the market. Market. I mean, it can support anything from normal air to, um, you know, more exotic dual custom loop water cooling solution. So, so that's pretty good. My only critic here is I find that 10 connectors is a little bit too much, especially knowing that this is a single GPU motherboard and that it would have done great with only six of them. So yeah, it'll be too much of our money spent needlessly here. I feel. Now, troubleshooting wise, well, the B650E Aorus Master get a complete solution unsurprisingly, starting with our first aid easy debugger here to signal the main stage of our boots and providing a quick troubleshoot feel of your system. But most importantly, we have a Q error screen which will refine our troubleshooting experience to the very reason why your thing refuses to work and it will one day fail. I promise you. Finally, we have our two power and reset soldered button to help us with a trouble free booting. Overall, a rather a premium troubleshooting uh, solution which will, was very much expected out of a very expensive master series. In conclusion, ouch. The B650E Aorus Master will cost you $350, which is 150 bucks lower than its X670 Aorus Master bigger sibling. An absolute uh, breath of fresh air. L let me be clear. The B650 Aorus Master is not only as good as its more expensive X670 Aorus Master counterpart, it is better. The VRM is identical, but has a better cooling solution. Somehow we have a broader PCIe 5.0 support. And for the rest, apart from the form factor, the B650 E Aorus Master, even at an equivalent pricing, remains a better choice. So the real question is, does it compare well to the excellent Rock Strix B650E, which is its natural competition. And my judgment surprisingly tends to favor the hours on this one, which despite not offering a dual GPU support, preserved the monumental VRM the X670E Master so proudly showed off, and which entails a better future Ryzen CPU support 
than its ROG competitor. In short, the B650E hours master, oh my god, this is hard to say, takes the pro gaming crown for this season and I cannot imagine anywhere else you money wants to be.